Hello and welcome to episode 18 of the Confounded Chronicles. In this episode, we're going to go ahead and cast the bearing blocks for the concrete lathe, so let's get into it. So we're going to cast up today is the little pattern for the headstock uh, bearing holders. That's a 3D printed pattern, which is an awesome use for 3D printers because you can put draft on all the faces and whatnot. Uh, and I'm going to cover it here in green sand. This is homemade green sand, so this is 10% uh, kitty litter and 90% play sand. I ground up the kitty litter in a blender so it was like powder fine, and then just mixed together and added water to taste until you got a good clump test. Plenty of uh, places online where you can see how to make this stuff up pretty easily. Rhyme up the mold. These are a couple flasks I made, uh, which should suit pretty much majority of my casting. And we're just going to flip the mold over now so we can uh, cut the little gates, risers, all that jazz in it. I'm using a wood backer when I flip it just to keep uh, any instances of it falling apart. And those couple dots I made are going to transfer uh, my sprue and riser location to the top of the mold. The flask, the other piece, the drag, flask, drag, drag, and anyways, I don't know. So I'll ram up this mold and I do one thing here that kind of messes up my point of where I can see my sprue and riser, which those little registration marks that I had cut in the step earlier, is I lift this top piece off and then I set it right on its face, which ends up squashing those two little registration marks. So that's going to present an issue in the future, but uh, right now I don't know about it. So I'm going to continue to cut the gates into the mold, or into the pattern of the mold. Cut a couple areas where the material can kind of pool and spin around nicely and pour or flow into the mold. And then we'll pull the pattern out. I have a couple printed holes in the back so I could put screws in there and then just pop it out. Here I'm smoothing out any sand pieces that I worry might get pulled into the mold once the material flows in. And now I flip it over and try desperately to find my registration marks, which have been squashed because I set it down on its face. So what I do is I just take my little uh, steel pins there and just eyeball where the locations are going to be. That It should be more precise enough. And then when I flip the mold back over, I shone a light down the sprue and riser just to make sure I hit my marks, which I did. Put the pins back in, which help to keep the mold halves from rising up, and we will light up the furnace. So this is about as low a setting as my furnace will run, and um, I don't know if it's required, but I like to warm up the furnace relatively slowly. So I just set it to low, I put the crucible back in place, we'll put the lid on, and we'll let everything come up to temperature relatively slowly, and then we'll start cranking up the power uh, to get a good amount of heat into the furnace. There you can see the scrap aluminum going to melt for this mold, or for part of it anyways, and then we'll turn some of the rest into ingots. I also have a couple little pieces resting on the lid, uh, which are going to be pre-warmed and then they'll go into the uh, little crucible first to act as a little melt pool and that'll help melt the future aluminum pieces. This is after about five minutes of running, so we're starting to ramp the temperature up now. I have another little piece of metal all sitting around the lid there just to preheat it. You can see the crucible is getting quite warm now. The forge is probably running, or the furnace is probably running at about 50% power right now, which uh, is more than enough for aluminum. It's actually probably a little bit too much uh, as I poured it. Probably a little bit hot on this mold, but uh, that's a good bet. That's a good problem to have. So I'll drop the pieces in to start with the melt pool, and then we'll drop the lid back on and get everything up to temperature. I also have a couple or three pieces of fire brick on the concrete there just to support the lid when I remove it. Gloves are also a good thing to wear, and I didn't, so uh, don't do as I do. Do as I say. That sounds better. Now a little faster speed. we got the melt starting up, uh, so I'm going to start throwing in the stock. Once again, gloves, great idea. I do have uh, eye protectors on, uh, but gloves are uh, something that I missed in this step. Once you have a fairly sizable melt pool in, uh, you can throw in quite a lot without, uh, without it freezing the aluminum, so... Uh, works well. Even the paint and the glue, it just burns off that, that material, so uh, not too bad. Here I have a full face shield on because now we're going to get into the dangerous parts. I'm heating up my little degassing wand stick <laughs> uh, to hopefully keep some of the aluminum from sticking to it, and then I put a little ball of uh, what is it, borax uh, in aluminum foil and plunge it into the crucible. I actually didn't account for the material bubbling up so high, and uh, it spilled over a little bit and I pulled quite a bit out, so got to put less borax in next time. Um, but uh, yeah, it seems to work really well for degassing. Knocking the dross off the little scooper there. Um, most of it was just pure aluminum, honestly, that was just bubbling over. So 90% uh, aluminum, probably 10% dross. 
here we have the furnace shut down. I'm just skimming off any remaining dross that I wasn't able to, uh, to get with the top of my little strainer there. We'll knock it over so we're ready for pouring ingots and get everything ready for the pour. This is probably a little bit too hot to be pouring uh, aluminum, but uh, I was kind of running against a time issue where the mold was heating up and I wasn't ready, so <laughs> no for next time. I also had an amazing shot here of pouring it from the other angle, but it's been so cold in the garage that uh, my camera shut down. So unfortunately, we only have the video from this angle. Pour a couple ingots and then quickly get the crucible back into the furnace uh, just so everything cools down nicely and you don't risk cracking. You'll also be able to hear the aluminum bubbling in the next step, which is, I think, from too much borax in the deflux or flux. The gas. Here's the whole furnace cooling down now, still very hot inside. And here comes the shakeout. Pull the two halves apart, and uh, I was basically going to try to pull it out nicely, uh, but I ended up just banging it out. Trying to make it pretty for camera, but eh, doesn't always work out. That's the part. So the burnt sand mold, honestly, once it all gets mixed back in, you don't even notice it. And there's the part with the sprue and riser still attached. So the next step is uh, we'll cut the sprue and riser off, and now we're going to mill all the surfaces flat. So I'm going to take this and basically just bolt it to the fixture plate on my milling machine. The back of this piece isn't flat yet, uh, so I'm just going to rough out the front, flip it so we can get uh, registration surfaces. Here I just have a beater end mill, because um, there might be a little bit of sand particles and whatnot in the aluminum. Uh, so we're just going to quickly manually run the mill over the top just to take that surface off and give us a nice dead flat surface to play with. And then I can flip it and do the same on the back. Since it's registering to the concrete lathe, the concrete surface isn't ultra flat, so I'm not super critical of getting the dead dead flat, um, but getting it, getting it close to flat uh, helps a lot. <laughs> flip it over and we'll bolt it down the same way. This fixture plate is awesome for this purpose. And here I'm going to mill everything, uh, just staying away from my mounting bolts. Then I'll spin the mounting bolt locations and uh, mill off what I wasn't able to get. I'll just keep the mill at the same height and just jog into a corner of the table so uh, I have the same Z height. Here we'll clean everything off and take off the mounting screws. Find new locations that'll hold it down and carry on with the process till we get everything nice and leveled out. I want this to be flat because in the next step we're going to bore out the bearing pockets and I want those to be as uh, perpendicular as possible so we have to start with everything nice and level. Here we're going to swap in my kind of janky boring bar setup. So we're going to put a new collet in and we're going to put in my old tag lathe spindle with my old tag fly cutter and we're going to use the fly cutter as a boring head. I don't have a boring head so this is the next best thing. And here I'm basically just going to manually eyeball it until we hit the center of that casting. Casting isn't perfect, um, but if I get as close to the center as I can, the mounting holes for the actual aluminum bracket here that mount to the mill uh, have enough adjustment room. So as long as I'm relatively centered, I should be happy. And I got to take probably about uh, 50 thou off the walls. Uh, so I left quite a bit of material so that we could get a nice tight fit for the bearing. I want it basically as an interference fit. And what I'm doing there is I'm cutting, checking the size with the outer race there. Loosening the set screws and then just tapping lightly with a hammer to keep knocking that uh, little cutting tool outwards more uh, until I get a nice fit. It's actually very easy to adjust it just to a few thou with that method. Um, I've done it in the past and I was amazed at actually how well it works. So here we got a really nice fit on both parts and uh, I was actually very impressed with how easy this was to do. Once the bearing race was done, I just went ahead and just milled out the bottom just for cleanliness, honestly, to make it look a little better. You won't see that part anyways, but that's the finished part. Next is to cool the bearing races and plop them in. I might heat the uh, mounts here, but that's her. So next week we should have it bolted up. Thanks for watching.